All right, everyone, I am in rural South Carolina. Uh, let me show you where, like I usually do. I think you can see that. I'm the blue dot in the middle. See Columbia to the northeast, that is the state's capital. Of course, Augusta is straight west uh, on the border with Georgia. These towns, four of them, very small towns, very interesting. There is a fascinating aspect to every one of these towns. They've got some pretty rough numbers. Let's say that up front, but uh, they are still interesting nonetheless. Now, the town I'm entering right now is Springfield. Population of Springfield is 450 people. Peak population was in 1930. There was 943 people here. It's lost a little over half its population from its peak days, what, 90 years ago? The um, median age here is 38. Kind of middle of the range as far as age is concerned. Um, median household income is 32,600. And the median home value is 84,200. So that's well below the U.S. average. Uh, median home values in the U.S. as an average is uh, 428,000. Now, uh, poverty is really high in this town, 41%. 41% of the people that live here uh, live at or below what the US government designates as poverty, uh, the poverty level. Is that the way it really is? Well, we're gonna see. In all these towns I'm about to show you, violent crime is really high. This town is 7.1 per 1,000 people. That's almost twice higher than the national average of 3.8. Today is Tuesday, mid-January. Weather's really nice, lots of sun. It's gonna get up into the low 60s, so that will be very pleasant. I'm gonna check out a couple things here. Now, they're driving through downtown. A lot of uh, decay in downtown. You would expect that since the town was twice bigger at one time. I would guess a lot of these buildings were built in the early 1900s. It's interesting though, uh, this building here, right on the corner, I guess was an old bank. Uh, you could see it was quite the grand building in its day. Yeah, it's a bank, well it's a bank today anyway, looks like it always has been. Uh, there's a handful of cars here though. Look at this Rexall, Borden's Ice Cream. That is an old sign, wow. I would like to get that on uh, in my man cave. <laughs> that thing's probably worth some money at a, you know, antique store. You can get a lot of money for that. Now, yeah, clearly this is a quiet little town, but it does have one huge event every year. I'm just going to kind of drive into the uh, residential a little bit. They have something here once a year called the frog jump or the governor's frog jump. Once a year, I believe it's in April, throngs of people descend upon this town to do just exactly what a frog jump sounds like. They bring their frogs and they compete to see whose frog can jump the farthest and the highest. It's actually a very big event in this state every year. So, uh, yes, it's a quiet little town, but uh, they get a lot of people in here once a year for something that's very unique. Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna cruise around the town a little bit. Does the uh, 
you know, median home value of 84,000. Do you really see that? Or is it just because it's a very low cost of living? You're seeing this home. There's nothing wrong with that one. Uh, so I'm gonna go take a look around a little bit. See what else is here. Uh, now this uh, building to the left here is the Springfield High School. Built in 1929, it is on the National Register. I definitely wanted to see this. You don't see high schools on National Registers very on the National Register very much, but this one is. Yeah, I wonder if the people who own this realize how valuable that is. It's even got a Borden's ice cream uh, part of the sign. It's in neon. Can you imagine that lighted up in your man cave? That would be fantastic. Incredible. Right there. A lot of great old stuff here. Wow. I'll tell you this, I and mean, it's an old downtown, but there is a store or shop in all the in all the buildings, the storefronts. It's not unimpressive. Very quaint. Pretty awesome, actually. Look at this beautiful home. Again, it could use a little, little TLC, but look at that woodwork and those two porches. Second floor porch as well. It would cost you a fortune to get a home like that right now. Uh, here's a house that has been abandoned. Nature is uh, beginning the process of taking this one. You hate to see that, but do you guys see that cat up on the roof? Look at it. I'm going to zoom in on him. There he is. Oh, there he went on the other side. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. That house, the architecture is pretty beautiful, but... Uh, Unfortunately, it is just being left to rot. You hate to see that. I am entering the town of Blackville. Population right now is around 1,900 people. Peak population was just a little over 20 years ago, 2000. 2,973 people, so almost 3,000 people. The town's lost about 1,000 people. Um, Median age here is 37 years old. Poverty is high in this town, just like the last one. 35.8. For children, it's worse. Seven, uh, children 17 and under, the poverty rate is 57%. So that is, uh, that is pretty high. Older folks, it's pretty bad too. 26% of people 65 and over live in poverty here. Median household income is 19,600. I don't have to tell you guys, that's, uh, that's pretty low. And um, median home value is bad too, 67,500. Uh, any way you look at it. This is a very poor town. Um, only 32% of the people who live here are married. Um, 13% of the women who live here are widowed. So it's uh, some pretty interesting numbers. Violent crime is pretty high, 5.5 per thousand people. U.S. average is 3.8, so uh, crime is definitely a thing here. So I'm gonna take a look around. There's a building here that has seen better days, and it is for sale, by the way. Uh, but they do have something very interesting here. 
It's called uh, Healing Springs. I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, I'm going to look around the town first, though. Uh, the homes in this town are not quite the same that they were in the last one. Got some trash on the ground. Yeah, this home, while beautiful at one time, has uh, been abandoned. Yeah, you got this one here. This is a pretty stately old home in its day, you can tell, but uh, yeah, it looks like it caught on fire. That's sad to see. Yeah, I'm gonna look around a little bit more. Looks like a laundromat at one time, now closed. Uh, just flipping a Yui. I'm gonna head back into the downtown area, I guess. See what's on the other side there. Got, got a house here that is just disintegrating, disintegrating where it sits and being taken by mother nature yeah it surprises me when I see that you know that that's just allowed to sit there but I guess there's no money to uh, you know tear it apart and haul it off uh, let's see got a very old home here that's for sale Yeah, it's really nice. You could tell that's, geez, 100 years old maybe? It's a very old home. Yeah, this one's for sale too. They got a few nice houses here. That's a pretty cozy little home there. See, looks like an abandoned one here. Yeah. There's a duplex just sitting empty. And right across the street, you got this beauty here. Beautiful home. Now, outside of Blackfield, here, they have something called God's Acre Healing Springs. According to tradition, Indians. Reference the water for its healing properties. It's a gift from the Great Spirit. This historical property has been deeded to God for public use. Please revere God by keeping it clean. Yeah, so I got me a bottle. I'm gonna go get some water. It's right over here. Yeah, they just have some uh, pipes coming out of the ground. You just um, come in and get you some water. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, the wife will love that. It's really beautiful here. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I filled up several bottles for the wifey. She loves this uh, pure water. I'm going to taste it. Uh, let's see. Hmm. i tell you what, you know it when you are drinking water at its purest. That's really good. All right, everyone, I'm entering the town of Denmark. Let me preface uh, everything I say here before I tell you the numbers with this. Uh, there are two colleges here, Voorhees and uh, Denmark Technical College. So if they're counting those students, they may be skewing the numbers a little bit. Median age here is 24, which makes it a really young town. Again, I think they might be counting some of the students. 26% of the population is between the ages of 10 and 19. 
Population of the town is about 3,100. Peak population was in 1980. There were a little over 4,400, so the town has lost a pretty good chunk of population. Median household income is 25,900. I am driving into downtown now. Poverty level is not as bad as the past two towns, still high. That's at 21.9%. For folks 65 and over, it's pretty bad though, 31%. Crime is really high in this town, really high. 9.4 per 1,000 people. U.S. average is 3.8, so it is triple the U.S. average, uh, violent crime. Median home value is 63,500. Uh, that is very low. 65% of the people who live here have graduated high school. Uh, so that is really low too. Look at that. Is this the actual city hall, I wonder? Huh. Um, let's see. Only 15% of the town has been married. Now that might be uh, the colleges affecting the numbers again. 15% um, of the women who live here are widows. So that, that's an interesting number as well. Now there's some uh, interesting buildings on the National Register here in this town so I'm going to try to find those first. I'm off on a side street looking at these buildings here. You see that it says Mr. B.S. Social Club. You think that's uh, an actual club? Thirsty Package Store? Interesting. Uh, I've got uh, Denmark Grocery. Hmm. Now there's downtown, the main street, right there. Uh, still looking around. The uh, American Telegraph and Telephone Company building, built in 1928. Uh, it was instrumental in the development of telecommunication here in this part of South Carolina back then. It's on the National Register. So I want to get a good glimpse of it. Um, I'm going to go to the Voorhees College. Most of that is on the, unit, uh, on the register as well. I did see some pretty interesting beautiful homes over here. Uh, on Richard Street Yeah, it looks really nice over here. Yeah, these are great looking homes. The big porches. They're very southern looking, aren't they? Yeah, this one here. It's really nice. Those are beauties. Uh, oh, then we got one here that is, yeah, this one's been left to rot. It's a nice house too, that's too bad. Hmm. I read somewhere that South Carolina has a um, really high percentage of mobile homes. People accuse me of being rich, that I have no idea what it's like to be poor. I grew up in a trailer park very similar to this. Oh. Anyway, uh, there's this guy here in the middle of the road. I'm going to do my best to not hit him because, um, yeah, uh, there is something definitely going on with him. I'm not sure what. But he's going to get hit. That was pretty crazy, wasn't it? Just kind of exploring the town. 
even though the poverty level is lower than the past two, it looks higher. I gotta be perfectly honest with you. Uh, that caught on fire, didn't it? I'm entering the campus of Voorhees University. Much of the school is on a national register. It was founded in the late 1800s by a woman named Evelyn Wright. She was a protege of Booker T. Washington and uh, she willed this university into existence. She was a huge proponent of higher education for the underserved African-American community and uh, it's why she uh, got this place built. Like I said many of the buildings are on the National Register. They were built by, many of them anyway, built by the students themselves. So uh, it's pretty impressive. I'm driving around the campus a little bit. It's, uh, it's really nice campus it's uh, really pretty what I've seen of it so far um, like I said there are I think 12 buildings on the National Register including this one this church uh, st. Phillips Episcopal Chapel yeah, I'm just uh, on the main grounds right now Hopefully you can see it, the sun's kind of in the wrong place. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's remarkable that one African-American woman in the late 1800s, early 1900s, no less, was able to get this founded and built. It's a better angle with the sun. See the school, much of it, the campus here. Um, okay, you can see more of it this way. Yes, more of the town here. Really a lot of this here. see a home being swallowed up by nature back there well, there's a dog just hanging out <laughs> see that uh, this is a store at one time it looks like no more of abandoned homes here in uh, Denmark just all over the place I'm entering the town of Bamberg this will be the last town to visit the town is named after founding father William Bamberg some of his descendants live here to this day there's about 3,000 people in the town now. Peak population was 1990. There was almost 3,900. 
So the town has lost some population. Median age is 53. This is definitely an older town. Uh, people 60 to 69 years of age make up 19% of the population. Let's see, uh, poverty level, really high, 31.6. Children 17 and under, it's even worse. Poverty level for them is 59%. 38% of the town is married. Another interesting number, uh, I thought. 23% of the women who live in this town are widows. 23%. Crime is pretty high, actually really high, 8.9 per 1,000 people. Again, the U.S. average is 3.8. Uh, median home value is 75,900. So like the towns before, homes uh, are very inexpensive here. So I'm gonna take a look around and see what I see here. The town has a very famous resident or former resident, a person that was born here in the political world. I will tell you about her in just a second. Now here's another building on the National Register that is of note. It is the Bamberg Post Office, built in 1938. It's on the National Register. Uh, it's notable because uh, it was built during Roosevelt's New Deal. And it the architecture reflects that. It's actually called New Deal Architecture. So, uh, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm going to drive back into this downtown and tell you what I think is wrong with it. There's no parking. In fact, the buildings, if you notice, are just crammed right up to the street. It's kind of a bad design, isn't it? Uh, so it doesn't surprise you that it is the dead zone here in downtown Bamberg. There's no people walking around. I mean, you just barely got a sidewalk and then you hit the storefront, see that? I have to say, I do not like that. Without question, there are some beautiful homes here in Bamberg. Um, the famous person born here, I was gonna tell you about. Well, that one's in bad shape. It's a beautiful house though. Anyway, Nikki Haley was born here. Now, if you follow politics, you know exactly who I'm talking about. She was uh, governor of South Carolina twice. First female governor of South Carolina. And then uh, here recently, she was the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. She's really outspoken politically that beautiful old house be nice if someone was to fix that up anyway yeah she's very outspoken politically and uh, there's talk of her being a presidential candidate or even vice president uh, in the upcoming 2024 election uh, she is of Indian descent both her parents immigrated from India to here in Bamberg and uh, yeah, like I said, she was born here. All right, everybody, gonna call it a day here. Um, next video, uh, the wife and I will be in Columbia, South Carolina, the capital city. So uh, be looking for that one. See you then.